On today's Local Matters, we head to the Alden House Haunted House with the Papa Pack TV crew, visit with community producer Beth Soboloff, and talk about upcoming events and resources in our South Shore towns. I'm Elizabeth Shanahan Jewett. Let's get started. <music> Zombies, goblins, and ghouls. Oh my, it's our favorite spooky time of year, and the Pop-Up Pack TV team headed out to find some frightful fun at the Alden Haunted House in Duxbury. I'm Tiff Phillips from the Local Scene by Pack TV, and we're here at Alden House's annual haunted house. It's gonna be a spooky night. Let's see what these folks have to say. I'm with Livy and Merrick. Livy and Merrick, what? Tell me about your Halloween costumes here. I need to know. My Halloween costume is a zombie cheerleader. A zombie cheerleader? That's amazing. So, is it scary, cute, a mix of both? It kind of mix of both. What color is it? Black and red. Ooh, that's going to be nice. How are you doing your hair, most importantly? I had to do it in pig. Oh, nice. Merrick, what about you? I mean a skeleton. A skeleton? Really cool. What colors? Red and black. Red and black? That's awesome. Now, what made you want to be a skeleton this year? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Do you want to be spooky? Awesome. Happy Halloween, guys. Thank you for being on TV. Liam and Tillman, would you spend the night in a haunted house, and why? Um, I would because I get all to see like I would get to see all like the other uh, like scary like uh, uh, like things, and I would be terrified. But <laughs> do you like to be scared? Like sometimes. Sometimes. What about you? I would because it would be creepy, and I like being creeped out. <laughs> what creeps you out? Uh, like. Being in a dark room with nobody around in like a haunted house. What do you think you would find in a haunted house? Um, skeletons. Skeletons? In the closet? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. What are you being for Halloween this year? I need to know. Happy. I'm T Rex. You're gonna be a T Rex. Are dinosaurs your favorite? They're mine too. I'm a black guy who's all black with an axe. You're gonna be an, a guy dressed all in black with an axe. Yeah. What made you want to be that? Because it's so spooky. It sounds really spooky. What about you, sir? A witch. You're gonna be a witch. That's awesome. You're gonna have a pointy hat. Now I need to know what is your favorite Halloween candy. Skittles. Skittles. I like Skittles too. You like Skittles too? What about you? Skittles and lollipops and airheads. Ooh, airheads are awesome. So you like sour stuff? I like yeah. airheads too. You like airheads too? Now I gotta ask, if you could stay in a haunted house, would you? Haunted house. Haunted you, house. You would stay in a haunted house? What do you think you would find in a haunted house? Eyeballs. <laughs> nice. Well, you guys did a great job. Can I have high fives? Thank you. Skeletons are in the haunted house? Awesome. This is my friend Elaine. Elaine, if you could stay in a haunted house, would you? I absolutely would. Why is that? Because I love Halloween, I love spookiness, and I love the hauntedness. What led you to love hauntedness? I love spirits, I love souls, and I love ghosts. Well, ghosts love you too, and I do. So, Mistress Teller of Fortunes, can you tell me what the future holds for me? Are you sure you want to know? Yes, yes I do. You want to know. All right, let me do a quick look and see what I see. What do we see? Ooh, we see gold cups, great fortune ahead, hit TV show, must see TV, <laughs> right here. She's 
good. It's she's in the car. She's really good. She's really good. <laughs> I'm with Desiree, the director of the Alden Historical Site. Thank you so much for having us tonight. Oh, thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to be presenting. This is actually the 20th annual haunted house that the Aldens have been sponsoring. It's like we've raised a, a generation of Duxbury um, students, and it's just wonderful for the community where it's always a big thrill. What do you think? brings people back every year. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, everyone loves a little Halloween fun. So, you know, the house looks fabulous. It's fun to walk through it. Kids love to run around and, you know, it's just great family fun. It's spectacular, if you will. Well, you're doing a wonderful thing for the community. We're so happy to be here. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate it and enjoy. I, we will. Yes. <laughs> All right, girls, I got to know some things. What is your favorite Halloween movie? Oh, probably Corpse Bride or The Night Before Christmas. Ooh, good stuff. I either like Hocus Pocus. I'm not sure if this is a Halloween one, but it's like a horror movie. The Sixth Sense. Oh, yep. Oh, my God, yeah. we watched that together. Yeah. It was really good. Very good. <laughs> I love Hocus Pocus, all the movies. The second, <laughs> yeah. One? Yep. Awesome. Did you like it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. What about your favorite Halloween candy? I need to know. Mine's probably Reese's Pieces. Good call. Yeah. I love M&M's. Ooh. Uh, I like any except for black licorice. Black licorice is disgusting. High, yes, yes. Um, okay, so if you were given the opportunity to stay in a haunted house, would you? Um, yes. Why? I mean, it, it, like, ghosts scare me to a degree, but I don't really believe that there are ghosts gotcha. so you know wouldn't be scared of anything i would depending on the people i was with so like if i was with my friends i probably would do it but if <laughs> i was alone i would not do it but that's fair that's yeah fair. i think i would do it um i'm really interested in paranormal stuff but if something jumps out of me i'm out of there like <laughs> like out <laughs> startle scares are different than regular scares i totally got you on that now i gotta ask what is your favorite thing about halloween because halloween's a great holiday um, I would say cozying up by the fire and watching a bunch of fun, festive it's movies. Christmas. With that's that's all seasons. How dare you? One hundred. Um, be festive three sixty five. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Just like cozying up anywhere, I guess. Um, watching scary movies, scaring yourself half to death at like midnight, and eat like eating candy all night. And you? Um, mine's probably trick or treating with friends. Even when I'm older, I'm probably still going to trick or treat with friends because it's just... There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. I love you know? dressing up with my friends. <laughs> like, we we just... It's just so fun. It's like a great experience to figure out what do you want to be this year. Well, I just want to hang out with them all the time, so I'll see you guys later because I'm done. Bye. <laughs> all right, that looks good. Tiff, please, can we go in the maze? Can we go in the haunted maze? Please, please, please. No, no. We don't, we don't have time for that. Please. All right, let me go take off my clothes. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> you guys haven't been We're left, we're kind of hungry. We need some snacks. Oh boy. <laughs> no, I don't have any blood for you. No? <laughs> no. Do you think this guy has any blood? Uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> All sorts of creepy. We're going this way. That way? Which way? There's so many ways to go. Uh, is this right. the end? We're at the oh. end. Is this oh, is it that way? Is this it? This is the end. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> Woo. Would you like some candy? I do. <laughs> Takes off. Is it really the end? Oh, man. Ah. How many can I grab? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll take one. I'll take, I'll take, can I take two? I like Skittles. It's been a scary time at the Haunted House. A very special thanks to Alden for having us here today. Make sure to check out Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for upcoming Pop-Up Pack TV events. And make sure to check out our YouTube channel for more on what's good and good to know. From all of us at the local scene by Pack TV, we thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.
This National Historic Landmark has lots to offer in other seasons also. The grounds are open all year round. Visit alden.org to learn more. The late Texas firebrand and political columnist Molly Ivins was not afraid to tackle state and national politics, speaking truth to power and using caustic humor to lampoon those whom she felt abused the public trust. On November 15th at the Plymouth Public Library, learn more about this first-class wit and social commentator at the documentary screening of Ray's Hell, The Life and Times of Molly Ivins. Special guest and film producer James Egan will be on hand to host, as well as answer your questions after the screening. The event begins at 6.30 p.m. Visit the library's website to register. Do you ever wonder what your pets are up to when you're not home? Get a pretty good idea of what you're missing when the First Parish UU Church presents The Secret Life of Pets 2 at their Fun Family Friday on November 4th at 6 p.m. Movie night out for the whole family and dinner too. Reserve your spot and email Laura at dre at kingstonuu.org. Alongside the blueberry and Concord grape, the cranberry is one of the only native fruits cultivated on the North American continent. Especially here in Massachusetts, this ruby fruit is a staple in seasonal dishes. If you have a favorite cranberry recipe that is too good not to share, head over to the Duxbury Senior Center's Cranberry Potluck on November 15th at 10 a.m. Bring your favorite cranberry concoction, sample others' tasty dishes, and hear about the health benefits of cranberries from Program Director Sharon Pisani. Register for this berrylicious event online or call 781-934-5774, extension 5703. Community producers play a key role in local media, telling the stories of our area from the perspective of the people who live here. Sometimes, those producers set out from here to tell the stories of the places they visit. Next up on Open Here, Tiff Phillips speaks with longtime Pack TV community producer Beth Soboloff about her life and her show, Two Grannies on the Road. Hi, Beth. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for being on Open Here. Oh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so we're going to get to the crux of it. I really want to know what your background is. What's your story? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Ohio. Oh, wow. And I was the fifth of six children, and my mother was a homemaker. She used to do sewing, bring in sewing for extra income, and my father was um, a, um, what do they call it? He was, he was a blue-collar worker mm -hmm. and tool and dye maker. And uh, so I grew up in a very, you know, kind of middle-class, small town outside of Toledo. Wow. When did you get to Massachusetts? Well, um, I had an older sister who was convinced that I needed to go to a um, Ivy League school, and so she and her husband, my, we're we're pretty spread out, the siblings. Some of us are five or six years apart, and so she was working in New York City, and she and her husband uh, brought me out to Smith, Mount Holyoke, Wellesley, all these schools. And then my mother said, well, you can only apply to one because that's all we can afford for applications. And I said, wow, if I don't get in, I'm going to be really mad. <laughs> but I did. I got into Smith College in Smith. Northampton. It's gorgeous out there. And so after Smith, I just decided to move to Boston. And I've been in the Boston area ever since then. I love that area. I actually went to school out there, too. I went to Bay Path University in Longmeadow, which is next to Springfield. So I'm in Northampton oh, all the time. It's, it's, it's a gorgeous area. It is. It's changed a lot, but it is gorgeous out there. Yeah. So I need to know, what what brought you to Two Grannies? What? How did that concept come about? Well, I had been in business uh, for myself for about eight years as a web designer. This is back in 2010. And I was actually kind of feeling sorry for myself that I had never gotten the opportunity to travel across the country in an RV with my kids. And yeah, I really wanted to travel. And um, then I just realized, hey, you have a job that you could do anywhere. So I started thinking about how I could think outside the box and combine work and play and travel. So travel you know, and, and work at the same time because I didn't have the time or the resources to not work for three months while I traveled the country or anything like that. So um, it just, 
I started thinking about that. And at the time I was single and I was also an empty nester. So I was on my own. And then I thought, well, I wouldn't want to do a trip like that on my own. That wouldn't be any fun. And then I thought of my friend who was a graphic designer. And she's a grandmother. And I, I said, you know, she's adventurous. We'd have a lot of fun doing this. And then the name just came to me, Two Grannies on the Road. And we started scheming and thinking about how we could do this trip and uh, you know, do seminars across the country, combining businesses, could marketing to grow their businesses. And we just were having fun with it, and we were looking for sponsors to fund a trip like that. And we did some um, applications, but it never came about. And so over time, we just decided, well, let's do what we can do and travel locally. And for a while, actually, what we did was, uh, you know, I thought about doing a TV show because I knew with community television, you could do shows basically for free. And um, we had seen a lot of ageism happening happening right. in the workplace. And, you know, we had friends who were laid off of their corporate jobs after 40 years and replaced by millennials. And they weren't ready to retire. They didn't want to. They couldn't afford to. And, but then there were others who were retiring and said, okay, now I want to live my dream. Well, maybe I always wanted to have a restaurant, but how do I do that? So we decided to interview baby boomers who had reinvented themselves and tell their stories to inspire other baby boomers and even anybody to live their dreams. That's amazing. That's, have you always had an adventurous spirit? Is that something that you just kind of, it has been in your blood? I think so. And maybe it was for, from growing up in a small town when we didn't, well, we went some places, but not very far. But uh, yeah, we used to go camping and, and stuff like that. And yeah, I guess I guess I have. And there's something to be said about like this generation of seniors. We were at the COA yesterday and we met a lot of people who are basically just living their best lives right now. Is there, mm -hmm. Can you say anything about that? Like, what do you, what do you think has changed? Because I think seniors, you know, 20 years ago are completely different than the seniors that exist right now. Absolutely. I think a lot of it has to do with more awareness of, of health and staying healthy, um, you know, maybe getting away from the standard American diet and exercising more, you know, and there obviously is a much longer lifespan now than there was many years ago. It's actually declined in the last few years, but it's still a long way from what it used to be. Mm -hmm. So if you retire at 65, you're looking at at least 20 more years, what are you going to do? Right. And people just don't want to sit and watch television or just go fishing. They want to do other things. They still want to be productive uh, and, you know, contribute to the world. And I think people live longer when they do have a purpose. Right. And I think people are realizing that. So I think a lot of a lot of things have changed. Well, I'm so glad you found your purpose. That's amazing. I'm having a blast. <laughs> so what does a typical day look like for you? Well, a typical travel day. Yeah. Um, what we do is we plan ahead of time. We decide where we're going to go. Sometimes it's because people have said, you know, please come to Hubbardston, or or they've suggested it, or we just think, you know, hey, we want to see the South Coast towns. And so ahead of time, we will go on social media and we'll look for a, a forum for that town, that, which are, they're all on Facebook. They all have forums, almost every town. And we, um, we go on the forum and we tell them we have a show um, and we're visiting every city and town in Massachusetts and we're coming to your town and we would really like help with uh, what we should do. Where should we go? What should we see when we're there? What the, what's the best place for breakfast, lunch, dinner? What are three things that, you're, that we have to see? What is your town known for? And we get 100 responses. And when eight people recommend one restaurant, we're like, OK, we have to go there. <laughs> And so we, we schedule our day. We call the owners. The, we always make sure we talk to the town historian or someone from the historical society and get what the history of the town is. So we make the appointments uh, so that we can interview people and not surprise them. Uh, and we schedule the whole day. So we'll go. We'll try to get there at 8 or 8.30 in the morning, which is fun when the town is two hours away. <laughs> Uh, and we'll, you know, usually start with breakfast, and a lot of times we'll go from there to the historical society, and we'll just plan our day that way. We'll try to find some adventurous things to do. We'll try to find unusual businesses or businesses that have, that have existed for, you know, 50, 75, 100 years. 
um, and we'll have, there's always a part of the day where we're just driving around looking at historic sites that maybe aren't open or the landscape, you know, or people say you have to go to Goose, Gooseberry Island and that we'll, we'll do that as well. And then we end our day, usually we don't stay for dinner because that's a really long day. Right. Um, so we'll end four or five o'clock come back home and we've had a lot of fun we've had great food we've met really nice people there's nothing like it living your dream yeah. so what has the reception been of your show because you've had a lot of press and things like that so what kind of platforms have promoted you oh gosh we've been on uh, boston channel 4 and channel 7 uh, providence channel 10 wbur radio Boston Globe. Wow. Yeah, the um, and also Worcester Telegram, a few other newspapers. The reception has been really great. People love what we're doing, and I think a lot of people want to travel. So they either live through us vicariously or, you know, I've been told people watch our show and they think it's fun and entertaining, inspirational, and they want to go to those places. So well, there's nothing better than that. What are some of your favorite places that you've been to? That's not a fair question. <laughs> How about like your top three, maybe? <laughs> it is so hard. Usually the top three are the last three we visited. But, um, you know, some stand out more than others. We haven't had a bad experience anywhere. Right. We've loved every town. They've all had these really interesting histories. But Hubbardston was fun because we, this little town where if, if you drove through, you'd think nothing was there. We found out there's a guy there who has the world's largest exhibit of uh, Back to the Future memorabilia oh in gosh. the world, and it, it includes three DeLoreans. What? So, yeah. So that was actually a standout. I, have, I do have to say that. That was a standout. Um, and by the way, they've invited us back because there's a the church dedication. We interviewed the people on the... Um, a church there that's being renovated, and when it opens on October 14th, they want us to premiere our Hubbardston show. What? <laughs> that opening, so we're going up that's there. That's crazy, Beth. That's, that's the, amazing. I know, that's fun. That's a first. Um, but, you know, some, some of the early ones that I went to, I really loved. Marion, they took us out on a sailboat. Um, the, I think they call it the captain's boat or something for the races, mm. and that was really fun. We've just we've just met such fun people. We've been through, you know, we've done cranberry bogs, we've done maple sugar farms, we've done uh, cheese factories. Just that kind of stuff is fun. I love learning new things, and I feel like I'll always be learning my entire life. And that's part of the thing that really attracts me to this is that I'm always learning something new. How do you think you've evolved over time with the show? I think. Well, a lot of our skills have gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. Editing skills, uh, camera skills have gotten a lot better. Uh, we've learned over time that people really like travel. They love food. And so that's why we, we um, moved more toward that, the travel and, and the food, because that's what people like to see. So that's evolved uh, as well as our, I think, our skills. So what advice do you have for grannies out there who are looking to kind of start their next step, what they're going to do in their next chapter? Just think outside the box and go for it. I love that. That's perfectly simple. That's, that's all you need to do. That's it. And what do you think the future holds for two grannies on the road? I think we're going to have, it's going to take a long time to get through 351 Cities. We've only done 43. Wow. So that's something to look forward to, right? But uh, I, I still would like to go across the country. The Grand Canyon, definitely on my bucket list. We thought about doing, uh, the, uh, the whole idea at the beginning was get out of New England in the winter. So we'd go south and then straight west um, across the country. But I'd also like to do a summer trip up through Canada into Alaska. So I if we... We're able to, especially to get sponsorships because it's nice to have, you know, gas paid for. Right. Um, then I think we can do some of those longer trips. But we're happy right now traveling locally. I need to model my life after yours. You are just living it up. And I'm so, I respect that. You're an inspiration to not just people like baby boomers and seniors. You're an inspiration to all of us. And I really, I really thank you for being here today. Oh, thank you so much. It's been fun. All right. 
Take care. You can watch Two Grannies on the Road right here on our community channel or visit the website at twogrannysontheroad.com. We all try to feel gratitude for life's gifts all year long, but the upcoming season serves as a helpful reminder to slow down, take stock, and express thankfulness for what we have, especially family and friends. On November 22nd from 12 to 2, celebrate old friends or make new ones at the Pembroke Council on Aging's family style potluck. Good company and delicious food. Two more things to be grateful for. Sign up by calling 781 294 8220 or stop by the reception desk. Negotiation expert Kwame Christian's motto is the best things in life are on the other side of difficult conversations. On November 15th, join the Plymouth Public Library and this best-selling author, lawyer, and professor as he talks about themes from his latest book, How to Have Difficult Conversations About Race, Practical Tools for Necessary Change in the Workplace and Beyond. Many people avoid conversations about race out of fear of discomfort, being misunderstood, cancelled, or ostracized. But if we want a more equitable workplace and world, it's important to be comfortable bridging gaps of understanding through effective connection and communication. This online presentation will run from 12 to 1 p.m. Visit the Plymouth Public Library website to register. Pablo Picasso had an experimental approach to his art, incorporating multiple perspectives of an object into one painting in the art movement now known as Cubism. Let your 7 to 13 year old unleash the Cubist within them at the Kingston Recreation Department's two-part mask making class on November 7th and 14th. Students will create a Picasso inspired mask using cardboard, hot glue, paints and their open mind and imagination. Register online through kingstonrec.com. Polymath Benjamin Franklin is a well-known and towering figure in the history of our nation, science, diplomacy, publishing, philosophy, and more. But what do you know about his love life? On November 9th at 1 p.m., visit the Duxbury Free Library to learn about Franklin's commitments, passions, and dalliances with Poor Richard's Women, author Nancy Rubin Stewart. In this author talk, Nancy will reveal the romantic attachments of this legendary statesman, including the story of Deborah Reed Franklin, his common-law wife and partner of 44 years. She was hardly alone as the object of Ben's affections, in company with feisty intellects, philosophers, musicians, and others who enjoyed independence not often experienced by women of the time, two centuries before the rise of feminism. Visit the Duxbury Free Library's website to register. On November 9th, join other families for the fourth annual Literacy Expo at the Plymouth Community Intermediate School from 6 to 8 p.m. The free and fun event showcases the important role literacy has in our communities and the ways it promotes lifelong learning, builds self-esteem, and enhances effective communication. Meet five local authors, enjoy a story time with Paddington Bear, and catch a show at the Blake Planetarium. No registration is required, but visit the Eventbrite page to learn more. The United States Postal Service traces its roots back to 1775 when Benjamin Franklin was appointed the first Postmaster General. For the small price of a stamp, this amazing service connects us nationwide to the still exciting experience of getting a card or letter in the mail. On Friday, November 18th at 4 p.m., kids aged 7 through 12 can visit the Pembroke Public Library to learn the value and almost lost art of letter writing with special guest George Kippenhen of the Postal Customer Council of Greater Boston. Kids will also have a chance to participate in a new stamp dedication featuring the art of Shel Silverstein. No registration is required for this drop-in event. Sometimes kids need a quiet place outside the home to get their schoolwork done. On Thursday, November 17th from 4 to 6 p.m., students 11 years of age and older can hang out in the Kingston Public Library's teen room for snack, and study. Light refreshments will be available in a chill, quiet place to work on school projects. Study without the distractions of home. No registration is required. Visit the library's website for more information.
If you live in this area, you probably know Mike Landers, who has been a luminary and benefactor to this community for decades. Aside from his family, career at the Plymouth Municipal Airport, and multiple board, town meeting, and council positions, Mike has dedicated his life to music and the arts. As a founding member of Project Arts of Plymouth, Mike has helped bring outdoor concerts to the waterfront for over 25 years, ensuring local families can access music and the arts for free. A friend to all and of this show, Mike has been a catalyst for beneficial change his whole adult life. A loving father to his wife and four children, Mike is grampy to 10 grandchildren, one on the way. His life beats the rhythm of community service. Now, Mike, who has helped so many, could use your help. On October 17th, Mike suffered a massive stroke, causing paralysis and an inability to speak or swallow. His recovery will be, at minimum, a long road of physical and occupational therapy, resulting in an overwhelming financial burden of medical bills. Mike's beloved wife, Candy, has taken a leave of absence from her work to manage Mike's care. Please include Mike Landers and his family in your thoughts. And if you can, consider donating to the GoFundMe set up in Mike's name. Mike has always shown up for our community. Let's show up now for him. And that's what's good and good to know this week in our community. If you'd like to see more content from the local scene, Follow us on YouTube at The Local Scene and social media at The Local Scene by PAC TV. That wraps this episode of Local Matters. I'm Elizabeth. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. We are grateful for your attention. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe to The Local Scene here and share everywhere. Thank you, friends.